Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Macon Bibb County Commission meeting. Today is Tuesday, March the 16th, 2021, and time is now 6 o'clock. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here today for our meeting. Uh, we have a, a medium-sized agenda tonight, but a lot of important information uh, that needs to be handled. Uh, we're going to begin tonight uh, with a prayer. That prayer will be led by Reverend Lavarnia Franklin, Jr. from Stewart Chapel. Reverend, would you come forward, please? This is uh, Elaine Lucas's pastor, and if uh, <laughs> th those of you can, if you please stand, and we'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance where Commissioner Paul Bronson. Let us pray together. Father, we come today because of your business of our city, but you're the first business of our life. We thank you now for your goodness and your mercy for us. Help us to lead well, to love well, and do the business of our city, not personal, but performing our best that you've given to us. Pray you watch our steps, watch our thoughts and our minds, that we shall do our very best to lead as well as follow you. We thank you now for your goodness and your mercy, because we do believe all things work together for the good, for them who love God and the call and conscious purpose, and we thank you for it. Help us to live through this and be able to love one in spite of each other and continue to do our best for the city and for the sake of our country. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Franklin, for those comments. As always, we appreciate you uh, being here and being willing to do that for our community and all that you continue to do. Uh, tonight we uh, have some very special uh, recognition tonight, um, and I believe we have someone here with us. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on uh, in our community. We have some young adults who are really starting to become leaders in our community, and we certainly are proud of them. And we have at least one, if maybe two, with us tonight. I want to talk to you about the NICA Awards. Uh, this is a National Interscholastic Cycling Association Awards. And just think about this for a moment. Uh, 25,000 kids in the nation um, was in a pool for these awards. Only two of those uh, students that got recognized and received this award are from Georgia. Two of those out of the 25,000. Both of those two are from here, right here in Macon. Uh, and tonight it's my pleasure to recognize uh, Jadarius Taylor and Rashawn Jackson for winning the NICA Student Athlete Award for youth cycling. And I'll ask, uh, thank you. <laughs> and if we would, I'd ask uh, Ms. Cherise Stevens to come forward on, on the microphone and tell us a little bit about the project. Uh, go ahead and bring your guests up there with you, uh, Ms. Stevens. Uh, and then we'll come down for a picture in just a moment, okay? Thank you so much. Um, less than two, about two years ago, we started a bike team with no bikes. And to have national winners in two years is a testament of our local community support. So I want to publicly thank you, and I want um, Rashawn to say a few words. I'm Rashawn. Um, cycling really has changed my life. For example, like, it's not every day you ride 100 plus miles or you climb like the big lawn in Georgia. It's like the bigger, out there, it was, it was bad. But it was fun though. So if I ride 467 miles in a week doing Bragg, which is a bike ride across Georgia, the cool thing about it is you're in a bad mood, you just cycle, you're bored, you cycle. But it's more than just cycling, it's mountain biking. If you want to crash going, crash going at like a high speed, mountain biking is for you. But not only that, it's more than just cycling. For example, I'm the club president. Well, I'm honored to see young boys and girls about the fundamentals and safety of biking. Like, okay, we're on the road with cars and stuff. You got to know how to turn signal, right signals, stop and all this stuff so everybody can be safe. And I'm glad that I get the chance to teach everybody how to cycle. Thank so you, Rashawn. What's that been saying? I just want to say thank you to our head coach, Janet Greer. Um, she started with us and she can also do 100 miles in a day and she is a wonderful person. So if we can, uh, if you can come down and take a picture, it will be on the National NICA page. And thank you so much for your support on this program. Thank you, Ms. Stevens, and thank you, Rashawn, for being here tonight. Uh, any commissioners that want to join me down front, we, we'd appreciate everyone getting involved in this picture.
Yeah. And Mayor Miller. That's how I always get up. Mayor Miller. <laughs> I don't like being in the front. Mayor Miller. <laughs> Sir. Mayor. No, the second kid, his house is um, has caught on fire. That's why he's not here today. So. <laughs> Once again, thank you for that. It's, it's, it's a great thing to bring attention to making Bibb County. And believe me, out of 25,000, uh, and two of them being here in Georgia and being from Macon, Bibb County, it says a lot about what our future holds for our young folks. So I certainly ap appreciate that and appreciate them being here tonight and appreciate all the support that the commission has given to this project. Uh, this time we're going to go ahead and move on to our approval of minutes. Uh, this is the approval of minutes from March the 2nd, 2021, work session and the regular commission meeting. Uh, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any questions in that regard? Hearing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. At uh, this time, I do not believe there's any public comments on agenda items. So we'll move on to old business. Uh, old business tonight, we have an ordinance to dedicate fellowship drive as Reverend Ronald E. Terry Sr. way in honor of Reverend Ronald E. Terry Sr.'s contribution to his community. Uh, that uh, item is sponsored by Commissioner Lane Lucas and Paul Bronson. Uh, Commissioner Lucas, can I get a motion? Got a motion by Commissioner Lucas, a second by Commissioner Bronson. At uh, this time, would either one of you like to make any comments in this regard? Um, yes. Uh, the late Reverend Ronald Terry, I think everybody knew him. And around this time of year, you would see him. I think he had a wardrobe of uh, pink coats. <laughs> he loved cherry blossom. And uh, over the years, the uh, opening ceremony, religious ceremony, was held at his church uh, for a number of years. Um, he was just a good person, a friendly person, one who uh, started his church, led his church, uh, and upon his, um, his death, uh, his church felt that um, it would only be fitting if they would request that we rename or at least designate that uh, small um, street there in front of the church in his honor. And so it's our pleasure, mine and, and uh, Commissioner Bronson's pleasure to um, sponsor, co-sponsor, uh, this particular thing. It's uh, near and dear to me. Reverend Terry was always my friend and always supported me. And so um, it's just an honor to do something for people, you know, and uh, it leaves a permanent something for all to see in years to come. Thank you, Commissioner Thank Lucas. You. Commissioner Bronson, do you have any remarks? Just honored to be able to take part in this um, honoring of uh, Reverend Terry. He was a true mentor, leader, and a man of God. And um, I can tell you on my first run for office, he was really like there for me. So uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to um, identify and acknowledge such a, a great man. So, and other leaders, of course, but for, for this particular great man, I'm honored to uh, stand beside Commissioner Lucas with it. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. I, I will say that Reverend Terry and I did not always see eye to eye, uh, and he <laughs> let me know that often. We, we had our moments and we were we were on the good terms and we had our moments where we were not so good terms but at least i always knew where he stood uh on the issues he's very passionate about our community and i appreciated that i do remember him often uh, wearing all his paint during cherry blossom so i think it's only fitting that we honor him during this time of his passing so we do have a motion and a second any further comments in that regard hearing no questions all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye opposed nay thank you that motion carries we're going to move on to item 7B. This is an ordinance to authorize a budget transfer within the Information Technology Department budget in the total amount of $100,000 to provide funds for network security licensing costs. Uh, that motion is sponsored by myself. I get a second. Second by Commissioner Bronson. Uh, any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Move on to item C. Uh, this is an item for Consideration tonight. I do not see Commissioner Watkins here at this time. I know he is en route. I don't think it'd be appropriate to proceed on this without him since he sponsored that motion. 
I assume that that's the general consensus of this committee right now? Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to the consent agenda and we'll revisit this item uh, at a later time when he, he arrives. Uh, we have items 8A through 8N on the consent agenda. I uh, would also like to make note that item uh, 8M will be co-sponsored by uh, Valerie Wynn, Commissioner Wynn as well. We're making that change for the record. So this time I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as published and as previously voted on in our commission meeting, uh, 8A through 8N. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Uh, discussion from Commissioner Jones. Yes, sir, Mayor, on item number 11, item letter 11, not number, does that include the amended the amendment that had to do with that include the, the amendment that was that I remember as being passed that included item L was the amendment amendment by uh, Commissioner Jones on the alcohol ordinance and that did pass through the committee is that correct yes sir that does conclude your commitment version okay just double checking no problem we do have a motion and a second. No further questions. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, that motion carries unanimously. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to um, the new business to let you know what we've got going on in the new business. Uh, the first thing item on the agenda we have on the new business is a resolution reappointing Henderson Cartwell to the board of Macon Bibb County Department of Family and Children's Board. Uh, item B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an independent contractor agreement with Environmental Differences, LLC, in the amount of $16 per hour. I want to go ahead and tell you a few things about these next several items to make sure that uh, everyone understands what we're doing. We did an invitation to bid for uh, manual labor for um, so we can actually clean up the roads, cut grass, um, items like that where we didn't have enough employees to do so. So what we wanted to do is have a contract and give everyone an invitation to bid on a price per hour. When you see these numbers like $16 an hour, $15.36 an hour, uh, please understand that that is our cost to the temporary agency. They're paying all the taxes. Um, they're paying uh, all the workers' comp. So that's not what they're getting paid, but we wanted to make sure that they got paid at least a certain amount when we sent our invitation to bid out. So we, had, uh, we used some temporary services through our Clean Streets Matter campaign. Uh, it worked out real well. A couple occasions we needed more workers than they could provide, so we felt the need to um, to include a diverse group of people, and we reached out to everyone to make sure we could get four companies that, as we need, seasonal work, uh, filling employees, uh, temporary agencies. We have four companies that we can lean on to do that, and we don't have to keep coming back before the for the commission each time to do that. We have a pre-approved amount, so you'll see these four companies. It doesn't mean we're using all four of them. It means we have a pool of four companies to use. Uh, in case we have projects and they can't meet the need for any one of theirs. Uh, the second one is C, uh, resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an independent contract agreement with ARC Temporary Staffing, LLC. The third one, D, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an independent contract agreement with STSS, Inc. Item E is a resolution for the mayor to execute an independent contract agreement with MacFace Marketplace. Item F is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of violence against women's act grant for programming for 2020 from the Georgia Criminal Justice Coordination Council in the amount of $50,000 with no local match requirement. Uh, item G is an ordinance to authorize a supplemental appropriation from the probate court and charges item probate court budget, dues and fees, other line item in a total amount of $80,000 to provide funds for the processing of weapons carry license. Item H is an ordinance authorized to budget transfer from the sheriff's office in the amount of $20,000 to provide funds for contract labor to cover duties of retired, I'm sorry, cover services, duties of retired employees. Item I is an ordinance to authorize a supplemental appropriation for engineering departments in the total amount of $7,500 to provide funds for installation of speed awareness signs. Uh, Commissioner Jones, would you like to co-sponsor that? These are the items that you and I discuss. Right, okay. I would. Okay. And I had a question from Commissioner Wynn, I'm sorry. I just I know we're going to talk about this and later next week, but the the the, the four companies you had at the beginning the, were those the ones that all bid? There there was um I think six companies six or seven companies that actually bid and these four met the requirements and were selected by the committee. Uh, Attorney McNeil, would you mind coming up just a second? Or I don't see Mr. Matha. Oh yeah, Frank Howard, either one of you. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> just want to make sure that I, what I just said was correct, correct, Commissioner Wynn. We placed an invitation of bid. We had numerous, I remember seeing a list of probably at least six or seven of, of those. Uh, the prices varied in range, qualifications varied in range. We wanted to have a guaranteed amount going to the individual. Uh, these four were selected by the directors of solid waste, uh, public works, and parks and beautification were on that committee. Is that correct? That is correct. And we uh, put a bid out opportunity for multiple, um, multiple firms to apply. Uh, we did have uh, seven responses, and four of them were competitively priced. Um, so we're extending this. Uh, we're uh, going to attempt a contract with these uh, four companies listed. Are these fairly equal in what they're offering as far as their work mobility? Yes, Commissioner. Um, these are uh, for day labor services, so uh, it's going to be relatively similar across the board. We just put them in order of or any particular reason or just, just uh, they're, they're on here for any, just just for any reason <laughs> they're not ranked by any kind of information it's all of them but we may use them over time excuse me we may not use all of them or should will we be you know using the first one going down to the second one it's per needed what, what we had last time is we needed eight employees and, and sometimes they could only come up with four so we thought we would have an, enough pool in because I, I, I Commissioner Watkins is not here right now but one of the focuses that he's been asking me about is, is cutting grass and making sure some of our roadways are, are kept up. And one way to do that without hiring a full-time employee for the entire year and paying all the, bench, uh, the uh, pensions and all the benefits for there is to hire some temporary workers through seasonal, which will save us money but also get us the workforce we need when we can't hire others. And we can use vacancy money from the departments to do that so we're not coming out of budget any. These are all equally qualified. They were placed out on an invitation to bid with the same qualifications. The prices vary slightly on these uh, as well. Uh, but I think we'll develop relationships to try to spread the you know, pie around a little bit with all these companies to determine if they're actually able to meet the needs and what quality of workforce they're providing to us. So I think that's going to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis by our directors who are in need of those employees. So, so the labor they'll be doing is just general labor, cleanup? Yeah, it's work. cutting grass, picking up trash, okay. uh, things like that. And I know you and I talked about it. I don't know if this is appropriate to ask at this time. We talked about why prisoners were not going to do that or could not do that. Yeah, well, okay. just, just on the prison labor. Because people have asked about that. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to close out that point is uh, during COVID, we're, we're not able to use prison labor uh, to do these things. The other thing with prison labor, people think it's free. It's not free. It costs us just as much as not more money. They use our equipment. They have really no incentive to protect our equipment, and it becomes a maintenance issue. It may make people feel good to see people picking up uh, trash on the side of the roads, but in reality, it costs us as much or more money. And right now, during COVID, we don't have it. Our public to hear you say that, because that's why we're not using them. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Commissioner Bronson, I understand you also want to be a co-sponsor of this. Or I? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or I? Yeah, I want to make sure that we <laughs> clarify on this end. We were, so, we're, we're so, on I. I just got sidetracked with Commissioner Wynn. I just want to make sure that in regards to the ordinance here, that that, that funding that we have is, is pushed toward uh, the project for Maynard Street, putting the um, speed cushions along Maynard and, of course, Nottingham. I just want to ensure that the ordinance that we're putting in place does include that. Well, this is for a specific incident here, but uh, we are working on what your request was to set aside some money for those types of objects to have a pool to, to pull from. Yes, sir, we're working on that for you. Okay. The specific amount was for that area there that uh, I think had, had some damage or something to that and actually is going to be replaced. Thank you. Yeah, so please add me on as a co-sponsor for that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Clark, you had a question? Yeah, I just I think you mentioned it earlier, and I, and I, and I, and I didn't follow it well. Could the, um, or with the, the money that's listed in the, in the contracts as per hour, could you just walk, are we ensuring that the, that the folks that are doing the labor are paid an adequate wage when we do that? Is that what this, that does? We, we listed a, a bare minimum we wanted the person to be paid. Okay. Uh, and, and they use that number to add their fees on there to come up with this. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, as part of this bid, these companies were required to pay the workers a minimum of $12 an hour that was put into the term. So the price they're charging us per hour is on the condition that they pay the workers at least $12 an hour. Okay, so that's basically on par with our pay skill minimum it, it probably slightly below, below, but it really depends on whether you add the benefits or not. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Commissioner Lucas. Um, yes, sir. Um, Ms. Mayor, I know this discussion has been helpful, but 
uh, new, these were new business items. Yeah, and I thought I'm just we stalling because Commissioner Watkins is not here, and I know we want to get to that, but I'll be happy to close this meeting out. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I just wondered, because I would much rather see us uh, have time to uh, have the old business items read than to uh, spend our time that's going to be taken for our items that are going to be taken up under new business in our committee of whole. Um, I, I'd like for us to start thinking about at least the possibility. Now, my pastor, I handed him my copy of the agenda mm -hmm. so that he would know. But, and I know we don't have a lot of people out there, but unless, yeah, that's, that's what I, no, I've got one. I printed one out. That's why I gave it. I, gave it I, I understand where you're going. But I'm, I'm just saying I would much rather us have that time if we're going to spend time. And new business is supposed to be new business and not discussed here. And this is not a criticism. This is just asking that we reconsider what we're doing as far as having everything under consent because I think we're, we're – um, shortchanging the public because everybody does not watch us when we're doing our committee discussion. And so, and I think a lot of people will say, well, what happened to all those items? And at least if they were read, maybe without discussion, and we, if we've approved them, we just go ahead and reapprove them. I just like the idea of us as elected officials saying to the public in this commission meeting, the official one before the public, that we do agree with our committee. And, and I just wonder whether our committee action is a final action anyway. It may be, you know, uh, someone might have determined that it is. But I would just like for the public's um, uh, understanding and to let them see that we are taking a final vote on that. So if the committee on committees could kind of revisit that, I, that I'm just asking, I'm just making that request. Because I have had some people to ask me, well, what happened to all those things that y'all were discussing that were on the agenda? And I really think we as an elected body ought to take final action yeah. just for consideration. What well, do we know? I appreciate that, Commissioner. Um, I do want to say that we, are going above and beyond what, what was done before. Uh, so th this is new in a sense that we're actually out here in front on a committee day, uh, during the day. We're recording all of that and it's posted on our site for them to watch as their heart pleases. It doesn't matter if they work at 11 o'clock at night, 5 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Uh, they're able to engage on social media now with that. And certainly they have all the documents that we reissue. I, I do understand it is something new and I know it's, it's not very comfortable uh, with that, but we're slowly moving to that. The only reason we're talking about new business tonight is I was uh, purposely trying to stall a little bit to get Commissioner Watkins here because I knew he was running a little bit late and he was very passionate about the jail uh, item that we do have on the agenda tonight, so I gave some leeways, particularly between myself and Commissioner Wynn. Uh, but we're duly noted, and we're talking about those things, and I'll get with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Clark and uh, Mayor, I'm sorry, Commissioner Bronson uh, in the near future to discuss any more efficient ways, but really I think it's working the way it is right now. I appreciate your comments. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the item now that uh, was previously marked as uh, Old Business 7C, um, unless someone else wants to table that for another discussion. Commissioner Howell, you have a question? Uh, item J. Did I miss that? I'm sorry, Item J. I thought that would miss that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I cut off two of them off the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll go back there. I meant to, uh, I was not clear on the consent agenda going from A through N, and it was actually, uh, we had a couple items on here from, from K and L that I didn't go to. Um, is that what you're talking about? New business. My, my. Okay. No, he's talking about something else. New business on the site business? Okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> I got distracted by Commissioner Lucas for a second. We had uh, a site visit to the landfill <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> and convenience centers. Uh, 
the uh, the plan for next Tuesday was to actually um, take the commissioners on a, a tour of the landfill um, as requested earlier but also try to go to a convenience center that could be similar to ours uh, assuming the agenda is not long so we are planning to do that uh, we are going to have a prepared lunch around 11 30 12 o'clock for you and we plan to have two vans ready to escort us to the uh, landfill and a convenience center uh, keep in mind that our, our convenience centers will be uh, much more improved than the one you see uh, and may have different items there because we have household trash that's actually picked up by a company in our county um, but we do plan on doing that if, if time to, um, permits next week so we will have that uh, next Tuesday at our regular meeting and I did leave that off sorry about that Mr. Howell and we don't have a need for executive session tonight either on the new business so um, anything further on that before we go ahead and move on to this other item Commissioner Lucas did you have something um, I just eye. have a point of personal privilege. Okay, we'll, we'll the get end. there shortly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we're going to go back to item seven, old business, uh, letter C. This is a resolution expressing support and actions to reduce the overall jail population during COVID-19 pandemic to allow for improved social distancing, safety, and health care. This was uh, initially sponsored by Commissioner Virgil Watkins, Paul Bronson, uh, and Commissioner Elaine Lucas. Uh, it passed uh, committee last week, I believe, by a vote of seven to two uh, if I'm mistaken so at this time I'd entertain a motion uh, on that item uh, a motion on there from so, someone on, okay got Commissioner Lucas got a motion I get a second Commissioner Bronson at this time we open up the floor for discussions uh, ahead, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Um, Mayor I think um, uh, we all well seven of us voted uh, yes for this because we took out all of the specifics the specific references and everything and we made it just a general statement that we supported any efforts that would help us to have a more efficiently run co local corrections system and that was I think all that anybody wanted to do anyway uh, as it was originally stated where we strongly direct or whatever it was I don't think we're in a position to do that and the sponsor readily accepted the um, new wording to express support and um, I, I think that's about all that we can do as a body just say we do support efforts and the sheriff has said himself that there are a lot of things that need to be done I think a hundred thousand dollars worth of items that he came up with initially and uh, also expressed that at some point we've got to look at the possibility of a, a, a new jail I think that's just that that's what I read uh, uh, heard him say so uh, I hope we'll go ahead and do this and just express our support okay thank you I got Commissioner Jones and then Commissioner Wynn I did not vote for it before I certainly support I don't I wish we didn't have to have a jail I wish we didn't have to have a jail that people didn't commit crimes and people didn't uh, violate the rights of others but but we do so uh, I don't know that this does anything as far as we you know I, I support the courts I support law enforcement I support all the parts components of government and public safety that's without a doubt i just don't see to me it may send the wrong signal hey they were looking over your shoulder that uh maybe there's somebody in there that shouldn't be there well if there's not then that needs to go through the process the courts the law enforcement and and determine that on a case-by-case -case basis but i'm not in support of it simply because i don't think it sends the right signal to what we're uh, to, to what I think we need to be doing we we don't need to be looking over their shoulder if something comes to our attention then we can direct it to the right place but I'll vote no as I did before thank you Commissioner Jones do we know to Commissioner Wynn thank you Mr. Mayor um, I expressed some of the same feelings Commissioner Jones just said I, I think that this even with the change it says a resolution expressing support of actions the public still sees that and the media even reported that all those actions that were listed under that original proposal were still being 
considered, and, and that's not what this is. It's just to expressing support for actions. But as uh, Commissioner Jones said, I think that our sheriff does a good job in running the jail, doing the best he can. Our courts handle the release of or whether or not someone's going to be released, not necessarily us or the, or the sheriff himself. I think the issue is that if we even support this the way it's rewritten or restated is that the community is going to see our citizens are going to still see us wanting to take people out of jail or let people out of jail for various reasons and and I just can't and I'm like Commissioner Jones I wish we didn't have to have a jail but we have people that break the law and therefore we've got to have the facility to put them in but I think that the sheriff is making his making efforts to correct the situations that were found or the issues that were found at the jail uh, by the grand jury, and I don't think we need to have this this um, this amendment here. I don't think we need to have this resolution to have him do that. I think he's doing that already. So, I, again, we'll say no on this. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. I, I do realize that the media did uh, make an error, and I, I I was displeased with the coverage it got in that particular area because I, th I think it sent the wrong message. Uh, however, I, I do believe that this is a a real good compromise of this commission to show that. We're willing to make changes and to really try to reach a consensus and it's still you, you do not have to all vote for it and that's that's okay we we all have our strong feelings about certain things certainly from a public safety standpoint i'm not an advocate of letting violent criminals out into our neighborhoods um, but i think this is a measure if i was sitting in your chair and had a chance to vote i would vote to support because it is it, it sends a positive message that we want to have something there without sending a direct order to the sheriff to let people out of jail that may harm our people so uh, having said that, we do have a motion and a second. I see no other lights. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. No. Okay. Uh, duly noted, seven to two, that motion passes. Um, at this point in time, we have completed the complete agenda, and we'll move on if any items of personal privilege tonight. I know, Commissioner Lucas, you have an item of personal privilege you'd like to speak about. Um, <clears throat> as uh, most of you are aware, uh, there are efforts in, I think, 30 or 35 of the states to uh, impose, to change the laws on voting, um, to make it harder to vote. Um, when the Constitution was written, the question of who could vote was mostly left to the states. Through the early 1800s, only white male landowners were allowed to vote. Women, blacks, and other disadvantaged groups of the time could not vote. These groups were denied the right to vote for many years to come. Black men were not given the right to vote until 1870. That's when the 15th Amendment was approved. Even still, after 1870, black men still faced major problems when they went to vote. These things included poll taxes and literacy tests, uh, telling, ask, being asked how many bubbles in a, a bar of soap, uh, you know, those kinds of things. This continued until the 1960s. In 1964, the 24th Amendment was approved. It made poll taxes illegal. The next year, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 put an end to Jim Crow segregation laws. No American women were allowed to vote until 1920. That was the year the women's voting movement was able to get the 19th Amendment approved by the states. It said that all women were allowed to vote. However, black women would continue to face many obstacles to vote even after the 19th Amendment. Most all Americans over the age of 21 could vote by the mid-1960s. The American voting age was lowered to 18 in 1971. At that time, many Americans felt if you are old enough to serve your country in the military, then you should be allowed to vote. Today, the voting age remains at 18. More Americans have voting rights now than in our founding fathers' days. But many of our citizens are asking, with the history in this country, do we want to go back or do we want to remain, to, to continue going forward? 
and not infringe on the right of all citizens 18 and above to vote. Uh, at next week's meeting, there will be a new item uh, on the agenda, which asks us to take a position uh, and ask our local legislative delegation to oppose efforts to disenfranchise me and Tillman and Watkins and Bronson and any other black folks, Reverend Ficklin, uh, Dr. Moffitt, um, and, you, and you too, Reverend. Uh, and uh, I, I, you know, uh, try and make it, lighten it up a little bit, but it's a serious matter for me. I, I registered at 18. I've been voting in every election, even while I was away at college, I voted every election. And how dare anybody try and take that away from me? And uh, the majority black population of our community, how dare they do that? And so next week we're going to, uh, I'm sure, have that, that lengthy discussion about that issue. And uh, all it simply does is it's going to ask our le legislators to look at the citizens that they represent and not turn the clock back with these repressive uh, voter suppression pieces of legislation and if passed to ask the governor not to sign. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and fellow commissioners. Thank you, and almost said Senator Lucas. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Uh, I was thinking about your husband's yeah. speech uh, during that period of time. <laughs> Commissioner Wynn, you have the floor. Mr. Mayor, on a much lighter and brighter note, I want to remind everybody that I'm wearing my pink today because we will, we will kick off our Cherry Blossom Festival this Friday at the opening ceremonies at Carolyn Creighton Park. And I want everybody to support this this year because we missed it last year because of COVID. And I want us to support the event. Some things are gonna be virtual. We understand that and understand why, but I want us to go out and support the event so it will be a success this year, even in some limited capacities. The things that are coming up are gonna be still be fun. They're gonna have the things down at Carolyn Creighton Park, the um, rides and things like that and the entertainment. So we want our public to go out and support this event as much as possible. And wear your pink and um, just be there. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Wynn. Commissioner Tillman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to uh, continue to uh, encourage uh, those uh, folks that have not received their vaccine. Uh, if you are, or your child or anyone uh, is at least 16 years or over, uh, I want you on this week, you can go over to uh, Eisenhower Parkway in front of Navison. You don't even need an appointment. Uh, you can go and receive your first uh, vaccine shot, which is a Pfizer shot. Uh, so if you're listening, uh, and I'll have it up on my social media page, and I'll ask our PR person uh, uh, to uh, please share it. But if you or your child is 16 years or over, the shot is now available for you, and it's happening uh, over the next couple of weeks. You can sign up to receive an appointment. Uh, that website is vaccinesafe.com. Uh, I wanted to say, I've been trying to pull it up, it wasn't available. But I took uh, this past Saturday uh, a couple of people over uh, to receive their vaccine shot. And so, um, Please understand, I know you've heard about 65 and over, 55 and over. That is a different uh, segment uh, that's out there at the um, uh, farmer's market, which that is a, a website that the governor uh, has designated. But this is a partnership with Navicent through uh, other means that you uh, can sign up and receive your site. So the most important ages it's a Pfizer shot your first shot and you'll you don't even have to get out of the car uh, matter of fact they won't allow you to get out of the car you just uh, roll up your sleeve 
and then there's a designated area where they will continue to monitor you for the next 15 minutes. So you will see the white tents over there all this week and next week. And so please, uh, if you're aware, if you're hearing this, if you want your vaccine shot, you can go and receive it on the spot. You'll have to have your cell phone to be able to access the website. And if you're there, I'll use this example. If you show up at two o'clock, they'll have you to go online to uh, the website. They'll give it to you. And you'll put in my appointment is at 215 and you'll be able to receive your vaccine shot right there that day on the spot. So uh, please take advantage of this. And so the quicker uh, we all can become vaccinated, the sooner we can get back to uh, uh, opening up our, our city, our community, our homes and enjoying our loved ones. Uh, and thank you all and commissioners. I hope by now everyone has received at least their first vaccine shot. Uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I did call and speak to the mayor because I wanted him to have his, and he's assured me he's gotten his first shot. I received mine. No Commissioner Lucas have see, received hers. Anybody else want to acknowledge that they received theirs? I know our attorney has, uh, Commissioner Wynn, uh, Ms. Roth. Uh, we're still trying to get you to go to ACC class. Right? And so, so, but I'm just saying, if, if, if we are leading by example. This is serious. And so we know that the one that is being taken place at the um, uh, farmer's market is ongoing, but this new one is its partnership. You can get it on the same day. And it was amazing. I was able to call somebody, and while I was still there with one person, somebody else showed up, and they received their, their, their Pfizer shot. And then everybody get their car. Because uh, at some point, uh, uh, the mayor and the commission, and I, we're going we're gonna to put together, uh, hopefully, an event, and everybody show up with their car, where we can at least celebrate uh, the beginning of some stuff. And so hopefully, uh, we'll do that. I think by the end of the month, uh, a couple of us uh, will have received our second shot. So let's continue to lead by example. And, uh, and uh, I'm just tired of seeing so much uh, sadness over this this thing. We can get back to some normalcy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't want to card you, but just want to encourage everybody. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Tillman, for the, those remarks. And uh, we are leading by example. And I, I certainly appreciate that all the commissioners' work you've been doing and, and been watching you uh, on social media and out in the public. And I think we're setting a perfect example. Uh, for Macon Bibb County, and we're going to continue to do that. I uh, do want to remind everyone that uh, April the 10th, we have a community-wide cleanup, and we're asking everyone to participate in that cleanup. We've had over 30 people, 30 organizations, 30 groups, 30 neighborhoods sign up already uh, to participate in that cleanup, but we, we want hundreds uh, of groups to clean up to make a real difference and show them that we want to lead by example. I know I can count on each and every one of my brethren up here today uh, to be at one or two of those cleanups, um, even if you want to grill out while you're there that's okay as well uh, we'll come by and pick up some trash and make it a good event for that day so thank you for your cooperation tonight and, and last week's meeting uh, i continue to see much improvement in the relationships that we have together and looking forward to working in the future i do believe we have no uh non-agenda uh comments tonight is that correct okay having no uh, further business that brings us here tonight this meeting is hereby adjourned <laughs>